Hey Data Junkies, welcome back. We took a brief hiatus while we went from the basic foundations of multiple linear regression. And now we're going to jump into doing just a couple examples here where we're going to talk about quality of life. So you can imagine that a psychologist studies this thing sort of quality of life. And there, he or she is looking in a large number of cities, 150, and came up with the following equation where we're looking at the mean temperature, which we're calling temp, and median income for every $1,000, which we're calling income, a per capita expenditure on social services, which we're calling SOCSER, and population density, which we're calling POPUL. Now, keep in mind, population density, although it's not spelled out in the slide here, we're referring to having a population density for every 200 people per block. So what we have before us on the slide here is a regression equation with four independent variables that we're using to predict this quality of life. And with these, we have generated for us a y-intercept and coefficients for each independent variable. And so our y is the y-hat on it, where we are predicting out quality of life. The y-intercept is 5.37, which means if each of our independent variables were ever equals zero, the quality of life index would be 5.37 on average. Now, we're not actually going to have a zero for all of these because we're not going to have populations where there are no people per block, and we're not going to have average median incomes of no income. So it's not going to be a realistic y-intercept to have a 5.37. But let's go ahead and see that we can interpret each of the regression equations in terms of the coefficients. Go ahead and pause the video for a moment and see if you can figure out how to go ahead and interpret each of these regression equation terms like we did with simple linear regression, but allowing the additional language to hold all other variables constant. Okay, so let's go ahead and work through these together then and you can check some of the work that you may have tried. Now our temperature variable here has a value of negative 0.01 in front of it. So we can interpret that to say for each additional degree of temperature, we would expect to see an average decrease in the quality of life of 0.01, holding all other variables constant. Let's look at the second one, income. Income is a coefficient of a positive 0.05. So we can interpret that to say that for each additional $1,000 in median income, remember the unit of analysis here, let me repeat that, for every additional $1,000 in median income, we would expect to see an average increase of 0.05 in the quality of life scale, all else equal. See what I did there? Before I said holding all of the variables constant, now I said all else equal because I'm just kind of changing up some language, but I'm still indicating that I have multiple variables in this model. Let's go ahead and say the one for the third one. This is one where we're looking at per capita expenditure on social services. And so what we can see is for each additional dollar of per capita expenditure on social services, it corresponds to a 0.003 unit increase in the quality of life scale, all else equal. And lastly, for every additional person per 200 people per block, sorry, I misspoke, for each additional person per block, we expect to see an average decrease in the quality of life index of 0.01, holding all other variables constant. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out a prediction value here. Now, if the same equation was given to us, and we said that let's look at a given example city that's going to have a mean temperature of 55 degrees Fahrenheit, a median income of around $12,000, and we're spending about $500 per capita on social services, we have a population density of 200 people per block, what is our predicted quality of life score? Go ahead and pause the video for a moment to see if you can figure it out, and we'll come back and work through it together. Okay, so you should have found a predicted value of quality of life scale at 4.92. How did we get there? So we're going to take that initial multiple regression formula, and we're going to plug in the number of values that we had for each one in our example city for our units of x. So where temp is at, we're going to replace that with 55 for 55 degrees. Where income is at, we're going to replace it with 12. 
not 12,000, just 12, because the units of analysis on income were already measured in units of $1,000. So we're going to plug 12 in there. Social service spending was $500 per capita, so we're going to put a 500 in where Soxer was. And the population density is 200 people per block, so we're going to put in 200. And when I go ahead and multiply temperature by its coefficient, income by its coefficient, and so on, and then I add and subtract down the line, we get a y hat of 4.92, which is how we can figure out that the predicted quality of life scale was 4.92. Contrast that when we were in simple linear regression, in which we would only have one independent variable, any one of these four would have done, and we would take that one value, plug it in for there, and come up with a predicted score. So here we have four variables that could take on different value characteristics for each given city, and we're using them to generate up a hopefully more precise predicted estimate. Now let's go ahead and spin this up a little bit. How would we look at this if we were looking at a different city that was identical to the first in every way, except that it spends $100 per capita on social services? So keep in mind, the first city had a mean temperature of 55 degrees, a median income of $12,000, and a population density of 200 people per block. So how is this going to differ then if we re have the spending per capita at $100 per capita on social services? Now we have the same coefficients. Pause the video for a minute to see if you can calculate this out. Okay. Now you should have had a value of 3.72 as your predicted quality of life scale. In this case, all three that we had before, temperature, income, and population density, are going to have the same coefficients the same independent values going in for those variables. And the only one that's going to be different, we're going to have that same coefficient for Soxer, social services, Soxer, but we're going to plug in a different number here. Instead of 500, we're going to plug in 100. And given that it's a smaller number and that the slope coefficient was positive, we should expect to find a smaller quality of life measure over in total. When what we get when we run through the math is that our predicted y hat is 3.72. So this is going to go ahead and wrap up our brief tutorial video on how we did a walkthrough for the multiple regression example. And I'm going to see you on the next video where we're going to talk about revenge of the dummies and how we look at these indicator variables now that we have to deal with reference categories. I'll see you then.